putting on my micro spikes because the road is more icy than snowy. This is an easy way to put it on without actually having to sit down. So toe in first, yank it at the back. Et voila. Good morning. We are out here in the Angeles National Forest. We are headed to the Chileo Visitor Center, which was closed off at the road because of snow. And we are probably gonna head up to Mount Hillia, um, do the loop from the visitor center. It's a beautiful morning, blue day, um, weather is good. We're hoping that there might be some snow deep enough for snowing, sh snowshoeing, but if not, right now we have our micro spikes on and uh, just happy crumpling about. Um, it's not too early, we didn't wake up super, super early, but early enough to hopefully avoid the crowds and um, get a really nice day of hiking in. Out here with Mr. Hiking Lee, paving the path to the visitor center over there. Very crunchy snow, which is optimal for micro spikes. Or just out here. I hear a little bit of water. I guess we're actually over a footbridge right now, but you can't see it because it's all buried under the snow. First post hobbling of the day. <laughs> Whee! So the snow's kind of crusty, but it's still soft enough and deep enough that you will post hobble. Which means that I might actually get to put on my snowshoes later. There's the beautiful visitor center. Smokey the bear. So it's been a hot minute since we were out here, Mr. Hiking Lee and I. Um, the last time we were actually here was 2016, like three years ago. So it'll be nice to see it um, after all this time. And especially because the last time we were here, we were searching for a little bit of snow and we only saw a tiny, tiny patch. Um, so this is kind of what I was expecting back then. I'm very excited. Off he blazes. Mr. Hiking Lee is making so much more work for himself. Walking on that deep snow instead of the crunchy ice. So right now we only have on the Cthulhu micro spikes for a little bit of traction. In this part you probably wouldn't even need it maybe if you felt sure-footed, but uh, I definitely am not. So we just got passed by another couple who rolled up as we were coming up or as we were parking in the lot and I'm sharing a tip with you that I shared with them and that I actually learned from uh, Alan Gearnett, the Further Your Adventure mountain guide that we worked with last week. And basically the, the tip is to park your car right at the edge of the turnout so that you don't run into any kind of possibility of snowplay people blocking you in. The awesome snow means that everyone and their child and their mother-in-law wants to come out and play in the snow. We're really close to the turnout, not really kind of hiking further in, 
and not all of them respect the rules of the road. Um, many of them will park willy nilly. Some of them not even on a shoulder, just literally on a lane. And so the best thing to avoid possibly being blocked in is to actually uh, park your car as close to the edge as possible so that you can have an easy exit, especially if you come in early too, before all the other cars start arriving. Thanks, Alan, for the tip. This amazing sound of shattering glass. How's that for ASMR? <laughs> it's kind of watery there. Oops. Unusual terrain. Officially coming off the campground area, the road that actually drives into the campground. And now we're on the Silver Moccasin Trail for a little bit before we also leave that to do the loop to Hillier. Snowy! Just delightful. It's a little uneven. We just had a costume change. Time for some de-layering and the sunglasses to come out. Because now that we're actually going uphill and out of the shade, it's surprisingly warm. So I took my puff jacket on, off, <laughs> and uh, Mr. Hikingly shed a couple layers. And feeling so much nicer now. on a series of switchbacks right now. Very short ones. Narrow single track. And the hat is also now come out. <laughs> it is sunny. And we don't want wrinkles. From here we get a pretty good glimpse of the kind of flatter top that we're reaching. I do remember there was one short little section that kind of is quite steep from horse lats, but after that it's a nice gentle rounding, also kind of round little hilltops, nothing too strenuous, very nicely gently graded. So I haven't looked too much into it, but from what I do know of the Silver Moccasin Trail is that it runs nearly the gamut of the Angeles National Forest and is a really good opportunity if you're looking to do a quote unquote like through hike or a kind of multi-day backpacking trip close to Los Angeles not having to drive all the way out to the Eastern Sierra or Arizona or somewhere um, yeah, I forget how many miles it is, but I think from memory, maybe in like 79, 80s kind of mileage, so not terribly long. You could 
probably knock it out in you know three to four days but it might be a good one to try maybe when I get into backpacking finally not quite there yet snow has left us temporarily back onto dirt I never quite know why certain sections of a trail just randomly have snow or don't have snow even though they probably get about the same amount of shade if you know the answer leave a comment below <laughs> Views are starting to open up. I think that's uh, Strawberry Peak over there. Can you see it? It is tiny. Some downed tree plants. Trees? Trees. We are done with the switchbacks. Um, heading up to the Horse Flats campground now. From where we will then turn off to do this little lollipop loop and then we'll come back here to finish off the hike. I'm always really grateful for the footsteps that came before us because as nice as it, as it is to have all of this fresh snow to create your own path, it's so much easier work when there are footsteps to walk in. They've already blazed the trail for us. There's no post holing. It's nice and firm and also I don't have to then stress about where to go, especially when it's kind of open like this and the trail is snowed under. It definitely turns my hike into more of a meditative walk, which is what I really like. You know, quiet time, apart from when I'm talking to you guys, and less kind of worrying about route finding and navigating, even though that can be enjoyable sometimes. That's not what today's hike is about. It's just a really nice stroll in the woods, following someone else's nicely trod path. So at this point, the silver moccasin goes to the right at this fork, but we are going to go left onto the Mount Hillier Trail and into the campground. So long, silver moccasin. We'll see you in a bit. Maybe I will hike you some other time. Now we go to where the lesser footsteps are. A little bit of post hauling. Onwards and upwards. The snow here is soft enough and uh, it's not a lot of footpaths, so we decided we're going to actually put on our snowshoes.
gonna try putting these in this one and seeing if that'll save some calf. Oh yeah. It's a little easier with the heel lifts on. So Mount Hillier, I think is a quite a nice place for boulders. Um, when we were here last time, we saw a handful of people walking up with their mats, crash pads, and uh, we did see a couple of them bouldering around the giant rocks here. I too would like to do that sometime. If you come around here often, hit me up in the comments. <laughs> Wow, so pretty here. Just going off trail for a little bit to catch this amazing view. Gorgeous. Well, that was sweaty work coming up here. We were following footsteps for a while and then we realized they had sort of gone off trail and it was really difficult in our snowshoes to, to try and follow them because they got into a really tight spot. So we had to double back a little bit, forge our own path, cut trail, stuck now currently. Um, and uh, yeah, now we're back on trail but there's no footsteps to follow. We've been doing what it feels like is the snowshoe equivalent of mixed climbing. <laughs> a little bit of snow, a little bit of rock, a little bit of dirt. And it also looks like the people's footsteps that we were following before have come back around now, back onto the trail. There's definitely many ways you can move around this boulder section which is kind of nice so that you can come here often and find your own path and have it be a little bit different each time. There's a lot to explore. Great for your inner child or your actual child. Finding some fresh snow. Backcountry desserts 101. Mmm, tasty. Mmm, mmm. <laughs> So good. Australian Californian shave ice. <laughs> you wanna try? No. It's so yummy. No, I don't bite ice. 
It might look like pee, but it's not. <laughs> what is it? Raspberry lemonade. Simple Truth Organics. Thanks, Ralphs. <laughs> Huzzah. <laughs> I can make you a softer one. You can just, you, you won't bite this one. A little lippy, lippy action. <laughs> You're like, <"Meh." laughs> denied. Ben did not like it. So we've just stopped for lunch. We've had our salami and cheeses and thinking for a little bit more, we were choosing between the Duke's brisket or the Jack Link's breakfast bacon jerky. Woohoo! Um, but Mr. Hikingly chose the brisket, so that's what we're, what we're gonna have. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh. Basically, like beef jerky. Not bad. All right, gear check for today. I am wearing an Old Navy Active um, base layer, long sleeve top. I highly recommend Old Navy actually if you uh, are on a budget. Their active wear is actually really good quality, um, moisture wicking, and uh, it's lasted me a long time. I've had this top for about four years now and it's done me well. So, um, and if you actually look in their clearance section, it's even better because then it gets super cheap. On top, however, I have a very expensive Arcteric jacket. Uh, it's the Proton LT, which is a um, lightweight jacket, puff jacket, synthetic. And it is, I think they're most breathable of their synthetics. It's designed for sort of, um, you know, winter activities, but where you're sort of moving a lot. And it's kind of perfect for today because we are, uh, we've been ascending still and um it's been pretty warm so uh, i haven't actually had it on for a lot of it but uh, it is designed for that activity i will say however i am very fortunate in that i didn't actually buy this jacket i won it in an instagram competition contest one of those ones where you tag your friends um very <laughs> unexpected win so i'm kind of stoked about that it's a great little jacket it has um sort of these like chest pockets. It is a climbing compatible jacket also, and it does have a climbing compatible um, hood as well. On my pants, I've got my standard Patagonia Crosstrek uh, fleece line tights, and they're pretty much my standard things for um, outdoor activities during the winter, because they are quite warm and very durable. And then of course I have my Yukon Charlie snowshoes and my outdoor research gaiters. Oh yeah, also I've got this really warm winter hat from um, Patagonia. It's kind of like a beanie cap combination because it actually can extend all the way down on the ears. It's actually really warm, maybe a little too warm for today, but I forgot my cap. Um, it has a cute little peak and if you pull it down low enough, you kind of look like a jockey, <laughs> which is an unintended uh, consequence of having this hat, but I like it. It's very cute. One thing I should also mention is that um, in the winter, or anytime I'm out in the snow, I actually like to wear uh, deck shell waterproof socks. And they might sound a bit weird to a lot of people because you think, oh, you can't breathe in them. But they're actually really great. They're bamboo lined on the inside. And then they have some sort of neoprene um, backing or outside. And I wear them in conjunction with the uh, Injinji wool, the thicker wool liners. Um, and uh, they're great. I actually, because of that, I'm able to keep wearing my summer hiking boots um, year round. And the boots that I have on are the Solomon uh, GTX something somethings. I can't remember them. But uh, yeah, my feet are um, dry, warm, even though my shoes are actually pretty much soaked through from the snow and then also through some of the th uh, stream crossings we had before. 
We made it to the top of Mount Helia. It's not super spectacular. There's not a lot of great views. Um, it's very wide open. It's kind of like a big dome. And I have no idea where the summit marker is, if there is one or a USGS marker. But we're here. And thankfully, very soon it's going to be downhill. I was wrong. There are actually pretty sweet views out in the distance. And it looks pretty magical with the snow. I think this might be a pretty nice place to camp, like winter camping. Have you ever done winter camping? I have not, but I'm very interested in doing it. So if you have, I'll leave a comment in the leave a comment below <laughs> and uh, let me know where you did it and how was the experience I'm very interested officially on the downhill section <sighs> finally it has been a slog something like well over four hours maybe five hours just to get up in this kind of deep snow so I'm very, very happy. Eventually this backside of the hill will meet up with a road, a Santa Clara Divide Road. And then it passes through more campgrounds. And then we will we'll finally get back to Horse Flats. And then we still have to finish the rest of the hike. Lordy Lord. Well, we made it to the road, which is optimal conditions for snowshoeing. It's so nice to feel like really firm, level ground underneath. It was kind of tough going around the boulder area, especially if you kind of accidentally like hit the rock and it just went clunk <laughs> and it didn't feel good. Um, it was really tough going and that whole section was way longer than I remember. Obviously we didn't do it in snow last time, so we kind of flew through it. Oh, much more of a slog today. Still beautiful though, and still haven't seen anyone else apart from the two couples that we saw right at the beginning. So if you are looking for a really special place to snowshoe outside of the kind of really crowded areas, I highly recommend this hike. However, my caveat is you really do need to have a GPX uh, recording from all trails or Gaia or your chosen um, app. And you really need to make sure that you're following that because it is very easy to lose the trail. Um, we lost it a couple of times, had to double back a couple of times and really, like you can't always trust the footsteps unfortunately lots of side trails and actually at this kind of back end of the uh, mountain we actually saw um, footprints coming upwards so just be careful about following footsteps make sure you're really aware of your recording or your uh, route and other than that be really aware of your surroundings even though this is really relatively like flat terrain, it's not super sketchy narrow trails. Um, there are, you know, conditions that you have to be aware of, especially as the snow gets softer and slushier. Now to take off the snowshoes finally. Oh, I'd be happy to take them off. I enjoy snowshoeing, but after like a solid five hours of it, 
I'm happy to take them off. I like my easy pull on and offs. Thanks to Yukon Charlie. <laughs> Lovely afternoon light as we head into this final stretch back on the switchbacks. And I gotta say, this morning I was all about like walking on every patch of possible snow, but after like seven hours on it. <laughs> I'm very happy to be back on firm dirt. <laughs> Well guys, we are back at the visitor center. Me and Smokey are re reunited. It feels so good. Uh, I can't tell you how excited I am to be back here. It's been a really long day. We did about seven miles um, slow going with the snowshoes and a lot of kind of wayfinding that we had to do. Um, so yeah, it was, a, it was a long day and I can't tell you how excited I am to see the road, to, to hear the cars again. We still got a little bit more to go, probably about uh, a third of a mile to get to the car and the road. Um, but yeah, there's hot chocolate waiting for me. So I'm very, very um, excited. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this hike uh, today and uh, until next time, see ya. Go for stop recording. The other thing I have to that makes it um, like if I if I have my sunglasses on, I can just look everywhere and it's fine. Yeah. But if I don't have it on and I'm not looking at the camera, it's like a little bit odd. Yeah. So. Oh, go for it. Many accessories.